Greetings to one and all present here. I am Nandini Ravi Shankar, a law student of third year and a Harvard Pair Delegate for Asia and International Relations. Why is talking against national education policy the dogma of the topic today? The pointification is quite simple. Habituated by me being a lawyer and reading in between the lines of the policies, let me draw your attention to a very, very poignant issue which is often going without us noticing it. The government says education is not a marketable product, but government is definitely a bad supplier of the product. Most importantly, when I read about the national education policy, what drew my attention the most is the staggering number of autonomous institutions that are going to be given a leeway. Everyone of us here is very much aware about the Darwin theory, the survival of the fittest. But the point is, acclaimed institutions like IITs and IIMs that are getting the fundings and pervasive state control will definitely stride forward by this. There is no denial. But when we talk about public universities, you already have a pervasive state control. What do you even mean by making higher educational institutions out of pervasive state control? And the government is itself drawing its attention contradictory to the judgment of Ajay Hasia versus Khalid Mujib. If any of the law students are present here, an enlistment was given by the Supreme Court of India which said, when will a particular institution fall under the categorization of a government? When you are funding, directly and indirectly, leading to the functioning of an organization, as simple as that point blank, institution becomes governmental institution. Now the point here is, when you are saying that I am giving autonomy to an institution which is a higher educational institution under national education policy, it is an old wine in the new bottle. When I say 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 sounds really bombastic, really jargon oriented. But what is this 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4? Let me segregate it for the ease of understanding. We say that students should be more vocational oriented, more technical more impetus and prolific towards the understanding as Westerners. But, two days back, there arises a news. The principal of a particular institution is in a puzzled state whether to train students technologically or theoretically. When I spoke to my sir regarding this, raising this issue, he said, MPhil is one of the most important degrees. Why? Because when you go to Yale University, every one of us wants to go abroad, pursue our education, come back, serve the country, right? And when I applied for it, I understood research is one of the most important areas of development. And when you don't have a strong circumvitae which talks about research, which is given a tonic by MPhil, you are removing MPhil altogether under the national education policy then how am I supposed to prove my research-oriented skills before a nation which doesn't know about me, my caliber? You training technologically is not doing something innovative. It is again imposing what the Westerners are imposing. I read the objective of national education policy and it says, introducing yoga, introducing scriptures, introducing Indian theory in a new perspective. But the entire essence of this national education policy is one, turning towards internet. Corona era, let's walk down the lane. When we were all sitting in front of the Zoom meetings, am I audible, am I audible, went on for 10 minutes. Class is remaining for 50 minutes. Now understand this, it is so mechanical that technology is seen as something really big without understanding that theory is indispensable. And when you just talk about vocational training, let me also draw your attention to one of the most important things that many of them were speaking about, infrastructural lacuna, technological bridging gap. It is true. 
it's persistent in the country and especially yesterday on scc online when the judgment flagged that the electoral bonds have been done away with you can't even come up with an argument in the petition saying that government is giving subsidies to people so now you have technology so the technological gap has gone no this is not a valid argument for national education policy technological gap is an issue and it cannot be denied when we say under 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 that students will be given a time period for training now let us consider the indian scenario okay april months generally the financial year also starts with fooling us on april fool day the financial year starts similarly the educational institutions are here to tell the students that we are giving you our lapse of training period then when are the students about to think perspective gain perspective read reflect is education only about road reading by imposing national education policy you are not giving discretion to the students what you are doing is trying to impose a particular pattern which a child would have easily embraced by its own choice at the end i would just like to say national education policy is not an anathema it's a panacea it's a panacea for the current generation that is striding forward to embrace the beauty of technology but not without theory and when i say conventional mode of education has been static i mean it that the conventional mode of education is theoretical and doctrinal and i don't know about other fields but for lawyers is the need of the hour thank you so much